lot of you ask a lot of questions about these episodes in the comments on Instagram, on YouTube, all over my social media. So I decided I'm going to answer the very best questions every single week. If you've ever wanted to ask what happened behind the scenes or what would I do or why did they do this? Well, every Saturday, I'm going to be answering your questions on the new I Will Teach You To Be Rich podcast newsletter. So I'm adding a link right now. You can go ahead and ask your question about today's episode and I will answer the very best this Saturday. To get on the newsletter, go to iwt.com slash podcast newsletter. That's iwt.com slash podcast newsletter. You can get the link right below. Ask any question about today's episode and I'll answer them every Saturday on this new podcast newsletter. We're playing and he goes, hey, so you know how the pandemic is hitting and everything's shutting down, right? Well, I'm gonna buy a ton of calls on Zoom, okay? Right? Because everything's gonna shut down and we're all going to Zoom, right? So literally, I bought 30,000 yeah. dollars worth of calls on Zoom. And I know what happened to Zoom. And in a span of four days, uh, those 30,000 became 150,000. Yes. So what did you feel at that moment? Oh, we were static. Yeah. We couldn't believe we were shaking. The day I was we were like, we need to put account. our money here. Uh-huh. Like, forget the savings. Like, get it out of the savings account. It needs to go here. Okay. What did you do then? We left the money in, and the money started to go down. Tell me the numbers. So it went from 150,000 in profit to 100,000, like, in a span of a week. So I told Millie, I was like, let's move half of that invest in the S&P 500. So you have half of it in S&P. Yeah. And then half of it is where? Is tied up in DraftKings stock. Yes, and we've I... lost a lot of you, money. I'm shocked. My plan was not to leave it in DraftKings for long, but then it just kept going down and down and down. And now we're like $80,000 in the hole. Like, What does that mean? Now it's worth about $20,000. You never told me that. Why didn't you tell me that? You didn't know that till just now? I didn't know that till just now. Oh, well then talk amongst yourselves. I want to hear this is not good. <laughs> oh. Welcome to today's special Where Are They Now episode with Christian and Millie from my Netflix show, How to Get Rich. Now, today you're going to hear where they are financially and otherwise a year after filming the show. If you haven't yet finished the show, hit pause. Go watch all eight episodes and then come back here so I don't reveal any spoilers. Okay, here's what you need to know. Christian and Millie told me that they want to create an empire together. They own their own place and they generate positive cash flow by renting out units of their apartments. He works for the federal government. She's a realtor. But as I learned, she also is involved in multi-level marketing. I had no idea before I met them. In fact, on the show, episode six, I actually got the chance to go to an MLM event. This is my fantasy. This is why I truly have my own rich life because I get to go to MLM events and then ask very pointed surgical questions along the way, which you get to watch. Now, what I really liked about Christian and Millie is they are both very family oriented. They both are children of immigrants. In fact, one of Christian's financial goals is to retire his mom. But the problem is they keep making these boneheaded financial moves. Like he invested in a meme stock and lost tens of thousands of dollars. And she has been saddled with a Cadillac from her MLM. Listen in to find out where they are now. First of all, have you heard some news about the show? Yes. What have you heard? Yes. I've heard um, that we're they're gonna like announce it tomorrow, and yep. then that it's launching on tax day, which is cool. Yep. I'm gonna be honest. I was skeptical from the get. Yeah. Uh, even Millie told me, "Hey, we've been selected for this show." I'm like, "Well, this is gonna be for you, Millie. I love you, and I will oh, do wow. this for you." But... Millie, hope it works out for you. Good luck. Yeah. Wait, why is that, Christian? I, I believe TV is all set up and like, you know what, it's all fake. A lot of it's fake and I don't, I'm a big skeptic, right? Like it's all made for viewership and yeah. stuff like that. And I'm like, all right, finance just really interested us. And that's one of the reasons why I really accepted to do the show because it was, she told me, Hey, it's about finance. And I'm like, you know what? It's no, no um, housewife kind of BS. This might be something real and let me give this a fair shot. Yeah. And 
it, it really opened my eyes. It really opened my eyes because I thought this was going to be something totally different than it actually turned out to be. You made us feel very comfortable. And like when we were having this conversation, for moments there, I felt like we, it was just the two of us sitting down talking and the cameras were gone. It really felt genuine, I yeah. guess is the word. It felt genuine. We were just hanging out in my living room like we were talking to a friend. Like, yeah. Because this is how we like having, we like having these conversations. We like talking about money and what we're going to do next and what we're investing in. And you can have that conversation with everybody. Not everybody feels comfortable to have that conversation because it was either somebody was going to come in and yell at us or somebody was just going to be like, oh, everything's perfect. You guys are doing great. And that's it. <laughs> but no, like we were genuinely just chatting. Fun. Yeah. We're having a good time. And it was also fun because you two have a good sense of humor. So I can joke around with you and I can be like, you did what? And I think that just makes the whole thing fun. You know, like money doesn't have to be so serious. I know, I know. Okay, I'm excited. Um, I just want to know also what's been going on. So can you give me an update? Boo, you want to go first? I've gotten a raise since we last spoke. How much? Uh, so I went from making last year, I was making 109, right? Uh -huh. To making 118. But with... 25% uh, availability pay, which I discussed with you prior. It comes out to around 140. I'm making about 147 now. Wow. So. Nice work. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I saw some bigger numbers on the update. I was like, ah, what happened here? That is yeah. fantastic. Okay, great. So congratulations on that. That is amazing. There's so many updates, though. Christian's being modest. I can't think. Married. I can't think on this. What do you spot. mean? We got married since the last time oh, we saw Ramon. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that. We, okay, we all right. I'll... I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> Maybe we should have Millie uh, run this part of the conversation. What do you say? Yes, please. <laughs> Millie, you got so married. Got Congratulations. Married. Thank you. Yeah, so excited. We got married. Everything came out perfect. We went on our honeymoon for a Where'd month. you go? What? Italy. Oh, my God. Tell me about it. Where'd you go? everywhere we rented a car uh -huh. we landed in rome rented a car and we didn't plan anything we kind of just wow. went with the flow it was amazing we went to rome we went to florence the amalfi coast we ended up in switzerland we went to monaco slovenia unbelievable venice we went to all the major like cities in italy okay so this is amazing when we met you were both very focused on the future, which I love. You know, you had this cash flowing thing and you were talking about generational wealth. All that's great. But I was kind of like, what about now? What's going on now? Mm -hmm. And to hear that you took a one month honeymoon and just rented a car and said, let's go in Italy. To me, that is just so beautiful. Congratulations. It was a crazy experience, but wow. I loved it. It's the freedom of not having to worry. Do we have enough money for moving from place to place, right? We really didn't think about that. We were just yeah. like, let's enjoy our honeymoon. If we deserve it. Let's enjoy these next, I think it was 25 days, right, Millie? And you'd be proud of us because we weren't like cheap with like where we were staying either. We were staying at very <laughs> like nice hotels, luxurious. Mm -hmm. For the flight back, it, when we went to the honeymoon, we did first class or business class, I think is what they call it now. Was it? I was like, Christian, you shouldn't have done this to me because <laughs> I'm not, I don't, I like, I don't want to go back. Wow. It was different. This is what I mean when I say you should live a rich life today and a richer life tomorrow. In order to do that, you've got to know your numbers and you've got to be working on improving your money psychology. So when it comes to your numbers, things like your savings rate, your investments, what exact month and year your debt will be paid off. All of this is covered in my book and in my money coaching program. I'll throw links in the show notes below. Now, it could mean that your rich life today is staying in luxury hotels or buying fancy cars. Fine. Or it could mean that you've planned for it. You've designed your rich life. And maybe today what's possible and meaningful to you is a picnic in the park with your kids. It doesn't matter the level of fanciness or extravagance. What matters is that it is intentional and personal because that is what makes your rich life meaningful to you. I love coffee and I wanna tell you about the system I set up so that I can get all kinds of new coffee regularly. I know there's a few brands of coffee that I love. So I set up a document and in that document, I track the types of coffee I love, 
Verve, Joe Coffee in New York, and there's a few other brands that I love with the specific roasts. But then every single month, I'm hunting, looking for new types of coffee. And so what I'll do is I'll ship myself a couple of new bags of different roasts, different types of coffee from different regions, and then I take a little notation card, I write down what works and what doesn't. Now, if you think I'm a psycho, what am I gonna say? This is my rich life. But I'm sharing this because a lot of us love coffee. And a lot of us want to know where to discover new coffee. That's why I am thrilled to introduce you to today's sponsor, Trade Coffee, which is a subscription service that makes it very simple to discover new coffees and to make great coffee at home. Trade partners with top-rated independent roasters so you can get their best quality coffee sent right to your home. It's all hand-picked by their coffee experts. And maybe you already know what you like. Like for me, I like Verve Coffee. It's one of my favorite brands. It's on Trade's platform. Or maybe you're not sure and you want to experiment. Either way, Trade makes it easy and convenient to discover new coffees, and they will send them to your home on your preferred schedule. So upgrade your morning routine with better coffee. Right now, Trade is offering our audience a free bag of coffee with any subscription at drinktrade.com slash Ramit. That's drinktrade, T-R-A-D-E, dot com slash Ramit, R-A-M-I-T, for a free bag of coffee with any subscription purchase. Again, drinktrade.com slash Ramit. At IWT, I'm all about teaching my listeners and students how to live their rich life, whatever that means to you. For me, a rich life is being able to invite my closest friends and family to a stunning resort in Mexico for my 40th birthday. It's having a personal trainer plan my workouts and my macros every week. And it's never having to get a spam call. Think about it. How many times a day are you getting a call from an unknown number? Or better yet, a text from XF345Z claiming there's a problem with your electric bill. I'm busy. I want my day to be efficient. I don't have time to deal with these spam calls. That's why I want to let you know about this episode's sponsor, Nomo Robo Max. Every single unwanted call is stopped dead in its tracks. Calls from people you know still get through, just like normal. And for those unknown numbers that might be legit, like clients or delivery people, Nomo Robo's call screener will jump in and let you know exactly who's calling and what they want. Then you get to decide if you want to take the call. It even protects against spam and scam text messages. And the people over at Nomo Robo take your privacy very seriously. There's no ads, no tracking. The best part is it's affordable. You can protect your whole family for less than $7 per month. If you want to protect yourself and your family from phone scams, go to nomorobo.com slash Ramit for a 14-day free trial. That's N-O-M-O-R-O-B-O dot com slash Ramit, R-A-M-I-T. Congratulations on the wedding, double congratulations on the honeymoon, and the income increase. That's amazing. Give me the rest of the updates. What else? What else? Okay, I started a new job. As soon as we got back from the honeymoon, I started like applying to literally everywhere. (laughs) Um, I really wanted something remote because I want to be able to travel when Christian travels, um, which also like we've been traveling a lot. We've gotten to Hawaii also since then. We we've traveled a lot. Like you'd be proud. (laughs) I am proud. (laughs) Um, So I got a job. I ended up getting a position. Funny story. So I applied for their accounting position. That's what they had listed on Craigslist. Mm -hmm. And then after one day there, he was like, I want to make you the manager. I want you to be in charge of sales. And literally after one day, that was it. That's all he needed. We re um, negotiated my, my contract. And now I'm at 35 an hour. I'm going to be getting commission on sales once I start sales. It's a whole 180. Wow. Congratulations. That's cool. So you, okay. So you have a stable job. Is it how many hours a week? 40. You're making 35 bucks an hour. So that's roughly 70 K a year plus potential commissions off of sales. Okay. How does that feel? You know, it feels good to like, have a job again and be doing something and being busy. And it just, it's a little bit um, of a, like a shock because 
whenever Christian's going away, like I want to go with him. He's gone yeah. to Abu Dhabi. He's gone to Hawaii. He's gone to, oh my God, how many places have you been to since January that we got back? India, and India, I went India. to India. You went to, oh yeah, I saw a picture on your social. I was like, what's he doing there? Okay, so Millie, you're saying it's an adjustment because you can't just get on a plane with him. Yeah, yeah, it's a little frustrating. He's a bit torn, yeah. All right, well, the good news, in my opinion, is you have time to think about what decisions you want to make. That's And also doubly good news is you have a stable income. I have one question for you because when we talked, you had had that bad experience with your past boss and it had kind of turned you off to working for anybody. What's it like so far with this boss? I really like him. Awesome. <laughs> I really like him. We get along and we have like sort of similar personalities. Yeah. So we just understand each other and like, I, I enjoy his company. And he says that same to me. He's like, I enjoy having you here. I love working with you. And it's only been a couple of weeks or a couple of months at this point, actually. Sometimes I don't like getting told what to do. And the fact that sometimes, I was able to. Sometimes. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> 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 and so like just being able to be like, okay, Millie, like just letting go. Um, being okay with finding a job, you know, and like getting back into that, that was like something that I had to like really accept their right. You ever meet people who go, I can't work at a job. I'm an entrepreneur. But the problem is that their business is totally failing and they're making no money. I meet a lot of people like this and they will tell me all these reasons why they can never go and work for the man again. And I'm like, I think you need to get a job. Because it's nice to have all these stories you tell yourself, in some cases, pure delusion. But the fact of the matter is, it's better to have a job that lets you pay your bills than to dream about being an entrepreneur. Cover the basics, save some money, and then you have options. This is one of the reasons that in my business program, Earnable, I encourage people, if you've got a job, keep that job, start something on the side, and if and when it becomes successful enough, then you can decide what to do full-time. Now, one of the patterns that happens with people who say this thing, I can never work for anybody, is that they had a bad experience at one job, and now they've generalized it to all jobs. That's what happened with Millie. She had a bad experience with a boss, and she made $12,000 in a single month with her MLM. So she said, I'm not going to work for anybody. I don't like that, and also I'm really successful over here. I personally am really proud of Millie for getting a job where she's now paid more she has stability, and she can contribute to her and Christian building their empire. Now, let's talk about the MLM. What's the latest on that? So I still haven't terminated my account, and okay. I still don't plan on it. Okay. Because the money that it does make me pays for the car. You still and have the car? I still have the car. Christian, I'm, gonna, I'm coming to you in a second. Don't worry. I want to hear your opinion. So you still have that... <laughs> car okay it's a nice car no it's certainly nicer than mine the payment on it am i remembering right 660 yes yeah, 669 and i make yeah. an i make enough where it at least pays for the car and just because of that i i don't feel like i should terminate because then that's now one more huge bill that i'm gonna have yeah right i loved uh, discovering how much you were paying for the car I still remember the look on my face. I said, say that again, what? And then going out and sitting in the car, because I thought it was like some old person car, you know? And, and it wasn't, <laughs> it's a nice car. But I'm like, I can't sleep thinking about this car right now. <laughs> so I love the family, that was my favorite, but I'll also never forget that car. <laughs> I loved it, I yeah. loved it. So you keep it, and then like, what, what are the last few months, how much did you get paid? I honestly haven't even calculated. I haven't been, I, I didn't prepare. That's uh, that's okay. Most people I talk to um, don't prepare speaking to me. It's, uh, <laughs> I have a dream that one day they will. <laughs> but you said that that MLM has covered the cost of the car, which by the way, they mandated you get. But how do you know that if you haven't calculated how much you've made over the last few months? Oh, for for last year though, I did calculate and it made enough where it paid for the car. That's how I know that because we just got our um, 1099. Got it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Christian, what do you think about this? I think she should get a smaller car payment mm -hmm. and hand it in the car. Uh, but like, then again, 
I think um, we've taken your advice as doing the proportion method of, of incomes to pay off the bills. And that's helped out a lot. And I know it's been a big stress reliever in the relationship. Um, so with that being said, when it comes to the car, yeah. she pays that on her by herself. And, oh. she, and that's something she's taken upon. So I think she's done the math, math on that and it's working out for her. So, okay. Thanks. I approve yeah. of that. That's awesome. So th- let me tell everybody watching why I like that is Sometimes we choose to have something extra nice or extra expensive. That's okay in a relationship, but the person who chooses the extra nice or extra expensive thing should probably at least pay the difference in what the two of you might pay or maybe just pay for the entire thing. Not the choice I would make, but it's not my money. It's your money. It's your rich life. So that's cool. All right, more questions. The proportionality. This is a Mm -hmm. big deal. How does it feel overall doing that adapted system? It feels good. Uh, I've been, always been for it. I always wanted to help out more, right? She was always a person right down the middle. Everything had to be 50-50. She was always yeah. that kind of person. Yeah. I'm always like, hey, I don't mind providing more. I don't mind doing this. But she was always dead set in her in her way of like, no, 50-50. I want to put up my share. Mm-hmm. Um, so I respected that. And we got to a point when we started doing the show and we started to realize you brought up the proportionality and I'm like, Hey, we never thought of that. And I think that's helped our relationship a lot in many ways, not only money wise, but I think emotional, right. Emotional wise. How so? I think, um, I think it just shows like a relationship shouldn't have egos, right? We're one team. We're not here to say, Hey, uh, this is my side. This is your side. I think we're one team and we're working towards one goal, right? Like, yeah. Like it's our money. It's not your money and my money. And I think that was something we were struggling with for the past few years. It was just like he said, like an ego thing. And I'm, I'm glad I like let my guard down because like, I mean, he's my husband at this point, you know, we're not just like boyfriend and girlfriend and a high school relationship. This is like forever. So. So that's why it's partnership. One person takes the lead and then that might shift And I love that the two of you have found a way to work together for both of you. That's awesome. Any other updates on the financial side? Yes. We never sold the stock either. Oh, God. The gambling stock? (laughs) Wait, no, not the gambling stock. I thought we were going to... I we're going to miss this part. (laughs) Millie's like, "Uh uh-uh, I have my list of things to talk about. Tell me, Millie. So we haven't sold DraftKings. Remember DraftKings, the one that we lost like eighty or ninety thousand on. Yeah, how could I forget? So you kept it, and how's it doing? It's going up, actually. Oh God! So you <laughs> so so. What is the lesson that you take away from this? I always love when people take away the absolute worst lessons. What's the lesson you take away, Christian? Um, just wait it out. <laughs> 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 buy a super risky gambling stock and then like you'll probably make a ton of money that's yeah that's a good lesson yeah. to take away yeah no def- definitely not i think uh i've learned my lesson with this um i just i guess part of me does not want does not want to let go yet with like i guess the hopes but i've spoke with millie and i have discussed this and i think uh we've set a target loss uh, oh, okay. price so basically once it reaches that target loss i will take the money out what is the target loss? How much are you targeting? To uh, Forty dollars a share. So we bought in at sixty-five dollars a share. So if, once it goes back up to forty dollars a share, you'll I'll, sell. Okay. I'll sell, yes. And what is it at right now? I can actually look right now. You, you know he has that on his homepage of his phone. It's not like he has the late. Before. I can give you the latest. <laughs> yeah, down to the second. Uh, it is. It's at eighteen thirty-five. <laughs> Okay, so it only needs to more than double. Okay, great. And what if the stock goes down? Oh, God, don't say that. <laughs> I was not expecting to be called out as much as we were called out on our, <laughs> on our stuff. And I think that was a wake-up call. You calling us out and calling me out on DraftKings made me wake up and be like, hey, listen, like, um, it's all right. You do whatever you want your money, but maybe you should communicate with your wife, right? Mm-hmm. Like. It's, it's something you guys need to speak about more, even if you're going to decide on doing it, 
it's something that should be mentioned. And the same goes with her as far as the MLM, right? You asked me, hey, do you know how much she makes? I had no answer for you, right? It's something we just didn't discuss, right? I handled the stocks, she handled her MLM, and it was something surprising. Rumi, we thought we were going to be the golden children of this show, okay? <laughs> we thought you were going to come in here and be like, you know what, I'm just going to leave because you guys are perfect. <laughs> and then, like Christian said, you just kept calling us out on all our bullshit and all our stuff that we were hiding under the rug. So that was necessary. God, this is such a great example of why the vast majority of people should not be investing in individual stocks. Christian made a random arbitrary decision to buy a stock. He's lost tens of thousands of dollars. His wife didn't even know about this. And now, rather than sell it, he's decided to create another arbitrary number that it has to reach, which, by the way, is more than doubling where it is today. And all the while, that money is sitting there doing nothing for them. That money could be better spent or better put in a simple thing like an S&P 500 index fund. But because we are cognitively wired to never want to admit large mistakes such as this, it's going to be very difficult for Christian to actually become decisive and sell this stock. Again, a great lesson on why the vast majority of people should not be purchasing individual stocks. One of the things I love spending money on is learning new experiences. I've taken coffee making classes, matcha tasting classes, wine classes, uh, cooking classes in India and in Italy. And there are all kinds of classes I love. That shouldn't surprise you. I create classes. Of course, I want to experience them as well. And that is why I want to share today's sponsor with you, Masterclass. Masterclass lets you learn from the best, and it's all online, so you can learn anywhere, any place, at your own pace. Now, there are over 180 classes in 11 categories, including... Names you have heard, like Scientific Thinking and Communication with Neil deGrasse Tyson or Makeup and Beauty with Bobby Brown, and there are new classes added every month. You'll see classes from instructors like Gordon Ramsay, Malcolm Gladwell, Steve Martin, Chris Voss, Esther Perel, Mariah Carey, and so many more. For example, there's a comedy class with Steve Martin where he teaches you how to find your material, identify your comedic voice, and even analyze different joke structures something you can only learn from Steve Martin. And I love this. My opinion is if you're gonna learn, learn from the best. That is why I invest in my own education and that is why I would encourage you to invest in yours. With Masterclass, you can learn a skill in as little as 10 minutes anywhere on your phone, desktop, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, or Roku. I highly recommend you check out Masterclass and you can get unlimited access to every class and as an I will teach you to be rich listener, you get 15% off an annual membership. Go to masterclass.com slash Ramit now. That's masterclass.com slash Ramit, R-A-M-I-T, for 15% off Masterclass. I get a lot of questions from people who have used my book. They've automated their finances. They've set their investments up. They go, all right, I did the basics. What's next? And when you've made a lot of money, you'll notice that there's not a lot of advice specifically for you. The blog posts that are typically focused around people who are just starting off or even people in debt do not really apply to you anymore. And it can also be embarrassing to ask. You can't really post about certain topics when you have money because your friends don't know how much you make. And nobody really wants to hear about how do I take cooler vacations or what do you all do for tax optimization? Because the first response is, oh, rich people problems. I don't like that phrase because rich people problems are problems nonetheless. How are you supposed to find someone you trust, whether it's an accountant or a travel advisor? The usual advice that you find on Google doesn't really apply at a certain level. So if you've made a big jump in income or net worth and you wish you had a community of people who just get it, I want to introduce you to today's sponsor, Long Angle. The Long Angle community is composed of high net worth individuals with diverse backgrounds in technology, finance, medicine, real estate, law, manufacturing, sports, media, and more. I'm a member of this community. There are so many interesting members of the community, and the majority of them are first-generation wealth. 
They're young, highly successful individuals, and they join the community to share knowledge and learn from each other, to get confidential, unbiased support, knowledge, sharing, and networking. And you can do it online through their digital platform, as well as face-to-face connections at their long angle in-person events. Now, members also have access to unique private market opportunities. And as I mentioned, I'm a member of Long Angle. I like it because it's vetted. Everyone on there has a certain amount of net worth, and therefore they are asking relevant questions of the community. You're not going to get people on there giving the same old advice like, hey, here's how you save money on celery. That's not the purpose of this community. Some of the topics that I've loved are multi-generational family trips. Or questions like, we want to travel for six months with our children. What do you all do for school? How do you make travel more seamless for children? I've seen topics I loved about concierge doctors. Topics that no one is really talking about publicly. And on their online community, there are groups for all different topics like education for kids, events, even philanthropy and how to become more thoughtful about giving. There are literally thousands of conversations going on right now at Long Angle. And I love it because it's a super high quality group and people are even starting to meet in person. Now, in order to join, members must show proof of at least $2.2 million in investable assets, liquid or illiquid, and a community organizer will hold a brief Zoom call with every potential member to make sure it's a fit. Go to longangle.com to learn more. That's longangle, A-N-G-L-E.com. Any other updates on the financial side? So we have also implemented the um, the automation. Yes. How's it going? Yes. We've automated. We've opened savings accounts and I've automated that. Yes. Yes. So every month we have money, a percentage, like we separated all our percentages. You, yeah. I have it like all in my phone, like organized. And so, I did Christians. M- I did mine. Millie, tell, tell him, tell him how we came about this. So we, f- we finished your book on our honeymoon. Between okay. long drives. That's very read, romantic for everybody listening. Book. That's exactly what you do. You know what's funny? I finished writing that version of the book on my honeymoon. So it's kind of wow. coming full circle. Yeah. Wow. In fact, I was I writing part that. of it in Italy. How funny. That's I nuts. love that. Kind of cosmic. All right. So you finished it on the honeymoon. Then? And we started opening the accounts right then and there in the car. So I feel like peace literally i don't have to stress about that i already have saved for it my my sister had her bachelorette like two three weeks ago i already had the money saved for it and actually when we calculated everything yeah it says that we have a lot more like spending money than oh we my thought God. I know. or then we're comfortable spending yes guilt free but it's but not for me i can't I do feel it guilty. Oh, I know I, can I help still you. can't. I'll, I'll I help you guys with that. It. Honestly, it's amazing to see just the look of relief and of joy on your faces. Like we have a system. Yeah. Uh, we have been telling everyone read the book. Please read this book. It's yeah. so good. And I love that it's it's like an instruction manual. It literally tells you what to do. It's not just reading. No, it it tells us what to do. And then you're so just like you know, laid back in it and your jokes and it just makes it fun to read. We've recommended it to so many people. And every chapter is something that is helpful in a different way. Credit cards, you know, investing, everything was necessary. And everything that you talked about, we were already in a little bit, Yep. but not to the best of its ability, basically. Like we weren't really... It wasn't optimized. Yes, it wasn't optimized. That's 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 the perfect perfect word. word. Because of the work that you've done, you've now earned the right to think beyond basic savings and subsistence. And you can't keep yourself small. You can't. Your parents came here. They taught you so much. They gave you the opportunity. You've got to take advantage of that. You have this money. You've already nailed all the other things. Now it's time for you to really focus on how do we build the skill of spending our money in a meaningful way? That's Can you do it? Point. Why don't we think of these things? Like, <laughs> 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 that's great. No, that's great. I, I totally agree with you. That peace of mind is amazing because money has been put towards that and has been saved towards that for these things that come up, right? And I think I think that has... It, it not only has helped us financially, it's helped us 
emotionally, right? Mm-hmm. With with the both of us, because money is a stressor. As much as we don't, we didn't want to talk about it, money was always a stressor. Yes, I made good money even back then, but it was communicating. Hey, do you want me to buy a hundred thousand dollars of DraftKings, or do I have to do it without telling you? Right? Like, yeah, yeah. So and now you can talk about it, and now you have a structure to be able to talk about it. It's not. Uh, you want this and I want that. It's like, what do we want? And it's also being honest. Hey, we are going to have some birthdays this year. We are going to have a wedding this year. Let's talk about it. What do we envision? One of us wants to, to go for three days. One of us wants to go for one day. All right, let's talk about it. But money is not always driving the conversation. I love the level the two of you have reached, which is let's start with what we want to do. And then let's use our money to support it. That's the way, that's the rich life. You start with what's our rich life. And then how do we find money and deploy it to use to create that rich life? You guys are living it. So I love that we did it together. The most memorable part that comes into my head is the conversation I had with my mother in my backyard. I don't know if you remember that. I do. When I told her, Millie and I took her to the backyard and I told her, hey, in a couple of years, we've set up our finances. We plan on setting up our finances to have you retired, to be able to retire you and you won't have to worry about working anymore. And it just sent chills. Like it, it put me in a, in a spot I've never felt. And it put her in, it, I saw the tears run down her face and it made the tears run down my face. And I'm like, this is a feeling I'm never going to forget. It was one of those core memories that I'm never going to forget for the rest of my life. I'm doing what my parents intended for me to do. And that is they took the risk coming to this country, right, for a better life, to give their children a better life. And I'm trying to do what they intended for. So, and and after filming the show, my mom said, we, we've had a few conversations about it. And she's asked me questions and, and she's telling me, she just sits down and tells me, she's like, I'm extremely proud of the man you've become. And the show has helped me or has made me open my eyes to show me, hey, Christian, you're doing the right thing. You were ready to play ball. And uh, as you will see, not everyone plays ball. You two did an awesome job being open to change. Honestly, you are, I think, the last people I'm speaking to today before the news comes out tomorrow. Nobody knows. My friends are going to be like, is this a joke? (laughs) It's crazy. So I'm excited. Like, I can't wait for the world to meet you two. I think it's going to be so much fun. I'm so nervous. I'm not going to lie because the world can be a little mean sometimes. Yes. Um, but I am really excited too, because I, I talk about this, you know, like this has been like a passion. Like when I talk about it, I like, you can feel it, you know, yeah. like I yeah. like this stuff. So I'm excited. I'm excited. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really excited, even though my facial expressions don't show it sometimes, but deep inside, <laughs> I'm very excited. This um, is his excited face. Well, the two of you have been so great. I'd love to stay in touch. And uh, congratulations. It's so impressive, even where you were when I first met you, but especially where you are now. I'm so proud of both of you. Best of luck, and let's stay in touch. All right. Take care now. See ya. Bye. 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 That was so fun. When I knocked on that door for the first time, what did you expect from this entire show and experience? Part of us thought, hey, there's this guy coming. He's going to basically give us a bunch of money and tell us, hey, surprise, just like you see on TV. (laughs) And we're like, we're like, yes. This is an Oprah, okay?